Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now if you've been watching my channel, you've seen me getting into firearms over the past couple of years. Even more so, you've seen me getting into rifles over the past couple of years and more specifically Ruger rifles over the past couple of years. But today we're going to take a look at the newest rifle added to my collection. This is the Ruger Mini 14. So this here in 556 or 223, it is one of the newer versions of the Ruger Mini 14. And when I say newer, I mean most recent generation. The Ruger Mini 14 absolutely being around for a good long time. And at this point, I did manage to get my hands on one. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through this in a little bit of detail. Today's kind of a first look and first impressions. Now I'll premise this entire thing by saying I've already shot this and I really, really like it. It's buttery smooth, it's literally perfect for my needs and it kind of meets a number of objectives and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit of detail. And so when we come back, a first look and impressions, but with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. And so the Ruger Mini 14, why this particular rifle? Well, a number of things. First off, I really did want a rifle in 5.56. At this point, I've had the Ruger 10-22, 22LR, and the Ruger PC in what you would say carbine or PC9 carbine, a 9mm carbine. I didn't have anything that was really rifle caliber. And so that was one of the deciding factors. I wanted 5.56 and it's nice that I can leverage either 5.56 or 2.23 with this particular rifle. So that was the first thing. And second, well, this for me is something that, and you hear a lot of people say, it's kind of like a PC sort of style or, you know, politically correct uh, rifle. Bottom line is this. First off, you know, everybody's got their angle, everybody has their objectives, and everybody has what they like, what they don't like, and what their situation is. For me, at this particular time, it did make sense to get into a rifle that was more politically correct for a few reasons. Now, I am sort of working through an iteration here. I am very fortunate that my wife's really cool, but at some point she kind of draws the line on things that can be polarizing or that can kind of, you know, look one way or another. And at this particular time, she does want me to stay away from the AR platform. I kind of get it. It makes sense for a number of reasons. It's maybe not the most logical, but it does make sense for a number of reasons. So for me, the Mini 14 did seem to make sense. But beyond that, Ruger. I love their rifles. I've had great luck so far. I feel like they have a good amount of aftermarket support for the most part. The Mini 14, a little less than other models, but there are some really great options. If you wanna work on this, if you wanna upgrade it, if you wanna make modifications, change out the stock, and that's the other thing. These are generally all the Ruger firearms so easy to work on. I mean, I'm certainly not a gunsmith, but I'm generally mechanically inclined. So having something that's very easy to work on and there's a ton of information about it out there, that's a plus. And so keep in mind the fact that there are a number of different Ruger Mini 14 models. This one here happens to be the model which they number the 58. Five, five. So again, the 5855. This has a black synthetic stock. You'll see that for the sights, has a bladed front sight and sort of like an adjustable aperture style rear sight. So adjustable both for elevation and windage. Now you can get different barrel lengths. This particular barrel length, 18.5 inches alloy steel. If you're getting into the weeds of the details, uh, this does have a one to nine right hand twist. This particular model coming with two five round magazines, a blued finish on the receiver and the barrel, overall length of 37.5 inches, a 13 inch length of pull and weighing in around 6.7 pounds. So all in all, I mean, this to me is literally 
perfect, with the exception being, <laughs> this is not at all what I set out to buy. The funny thing about it is this literally is exactly the opposite of what I set out to get. Now, I was gonna get a Mini 14, I knew that, but I mean, what I really wanted was I wanted a stainless receiver and barrel. And I also wanted the 16 inch barrel. I didn't want an 18 inch barrel for a couple of reasons. First off, I wanted the stainless version because I want this to be a workhorse and I wanted to minimize the overall amount of maintenance in a stainless barrel, I believe, and you know, the experts will weigh in, but I believe would be a little less maintenance, a little less prone to rust, a little less need to keep it oiled, and of course you need to be careful. And I do live in an area that can be prone to salt intrusion. So having something that's just a workhorse with a little less general maintenance, I thought would work out. But uh, why the 16 inch versus the 18 inch barrel? Well, bottom line is this, I have a rifle bag that's literally perfect and I was, really hoping that you know my mini 14 would fit in that rifle bag but at this point no this literally sticks out the top the exact distance and difference in the length of barrel that i didn't get so in other words two inches showing above the top of the bag so unfortunately that means i need to go to more of a full-sized rifle bag so that is a consideration however I kind of conceded. Now, the way this all happened is like most good, you know, firearms purchases, you literally walk into the store, you see it sitting on the shelf, and well, you probably weren't in a position to go buying it, but you said, I need it, and I need it now, and you have to make some concessions, and I said, well, this is sitting there, it's sitting there now, I picked it up, put it in my hands, it called my name, and well, lo and behold, here she is. So I now own this and I made the concession to say, well, at least with the longer barrel, my sight radius is longer, which means that theoretically that couple of inches should mean I'm a couple inches more accurate. Now, is that truth or fiction? I can't honestly really say, but I do feel like the way I shot this, again, I've already shot this a little bit. I shot it really well. I mean, for my first time out with it, I feel really good about the performance, my overall accuracy, and the ability just to kind of lock in on my target. So I'll take that as a win. Now, in terms of the magazines, again, just a five round capacity. That's a little bit lame, but at the same time, keeping in mind the fact that all of us live in a different place in the world, and at least I'm in a place where, you know, I can do this, and I'm in a situation where I can enjoy this hobby and enjoy firearms and, you know, keep myself busy. So even though I'm a little bit bummed out about just simply having the five round magazines it is a place to start now obviously uh there are a few things i could do uh, i could get 10 round magazines no problem you know modern day current no worries uh, i could also get some larger capacity pre-band magazines for this which would actually work out pretty well. Now, the one thing you need to consider with the Ruger Mini 14 is you pretty much only can use the proprietary magazines. These are specific to the Mini 14. You don't have too many other options. Like, for example, if I went with like the 1022, there's a ton of aftermarket support and aftermarket magazines. If I went with the PC Carbine, uh, you do have the ability to leverage other uh, Ruger magazines but the best thing to do is really swap out for Glock mags. And at that point, you kind of get a better, you know, plethora or selection. In this particular case, I'm sort of stuck with what I've got for now. But over time, things may change and develop depending on what I'm capable of getting my hands on. As we take a look at the trigger, the nice thing is this actually does leverage a metal trigger, which is awesome. My other models, they're plastic triggers. You know, there's just something about metal. I'd prefer it to be metal. I'd prefer it to be durable. And this definitely goes a long way for that. Now, in terms of the safety, this is a little bit different from my other Ruger models. The other ones have sort of the push button in front of the trigger. This one here, 
is kind of a switch, which this, if you're not careful, can pretty easily be knocked, especially when you get your finger into the, uh, you know, within the trigger guard and, you know, you could potentially knock that out of place. Now, I don't foresee personally having a problem with it, just with my firearms practices, how I carry my weapons, how I maintain them, and what I think it would really take to accidentally knock that. I don't think that's going to be a problem for me. And if anything, it's actually kind of convenient where literally when you get ready to shoot, you just kind of lean into it and that will push it forward. So uh, as a matter of practice, I guess time will tell for right now. I mean, it's a real easy switch, no problem. So I guess we'll just have to see how things go. One thing to get a little bit used to is the installation of the magazine. You kind of need to tip it forward a little bit and then rock it back. You'll see it clicks into place easily and then to drop it out here. So the magazine lever, pretty easy to get onto and that will drop out. So of course at this point, you know, I kind of need to finagle it out just because I'm, you know, holding things a little bit awkward, but at the same time, pretty straightforward. So again, that was one thing I was struggling with at first. You don't really press these straight up and in, but rather at an angle and then you rock it into place. That goes in very easy, no problem, no worries at all. And of course, depending on the size of the magazine, it may or may not go flush. So here with the five rounds, these do go flush. You can see a very clean and low profile, which may have some advantages, to be honest, in some ways. Now, I'm not exactly sure what the advantages would, you know, overweigh and outweigh the deficiencies of not having enough rounds. But at the same time, it's definitely just a consideration. Now, at this point, you'll notice that the chamber is open and the charging handle is held back. Once you expend your rounds, it will automatically open, and to get it closed at this point, you actually need to depress. You'll notice inside here, the little like ejector tab, you pretty much just pull this back, press that down, and that will close the bolt. So you can see at this point, everything nice and closed at this point. That's just a consideration, and again, you'll notice it's stuck open, Pull that back, press the button, that will depress the little tab. So you'll notice again, I'm just gonna do this one last time so you can see. If I want this to hold open, pull back the handle. And just a subtle detail, but you'll notice right when I press this button, that little tab pops up, which you can see at that point holds this open. So again, very simple, just depress and you can release it. So that does work pretty easy, not a big deal very simple and it's just something to get used to a little bit different from some of the other firearms that i've used in the past now again because there are multiple models each one has a slightly different configuration this particular rifle has more of your standard traditional stock i really do like this they have models that have more of a pistol grip which i potentially could have got but I don't know. There's just something about the way the traditional grip feels in my hands. It indexes well. It's just a positive lockup. It's comfortable ergonomically. It's fantastic. It's a very natural way for the human hand to interface with the firearm. If you notice here, like no movement or angle changes in my hand, just nice and natural. Feels really good and indexes very well. A little bit of checkering on the side you can see just for grip so that does aid in overall purchase just a little bit of grip there and also on the forend so as you take a look here you'll notice the forend has that same sort of checkering over the top you do have a hand guard so this guard does help to protect the uh and and this barrel i can already tell you does get quite hot quite quite hot so this is necessary uh what i do like is once you start potentially thinking about you know different ways to customize your firearm or what you want to do with it it's pretty easy to remove this and you do have the ability to potentially paint this or you know cover it in different ways which would create a different sort of look and separation where you see the barrel coming through these slots and it just would give it a neat look so i like this about it i think it's a great look and i like that this also just sort of has that traditional and historic look about it 
The Mini 14 having a traditional look modeled after the M14 or the M1 carbine. I mean, sort of that iconic look, classic look, and just a shout out and homage to the past. Now, could I have got this with the wood stock and gone all the way with it? For sure. For me, I have reasons to want the synthetic. Uh, my firearms become projects and you know, it's not one and done. If it was one and done, just purchase it and it is what it is. I probably would have gone with the wood for that classic look. But in this particular case, there's a lot that I'm going to do with this. So this is just a starting platform for me and much more to come with this particular firearm in the future. But at this point, that kind of wraps up my first look and impressions in terms of the overview. But what about the fit? Now, keep in mind the fact that I'm six foot one and I have about a six foot wingspan. So every firearm is going to fit a little bit different for everybody. Some people that might fit well, other people that might be too large, too small. It just depends. For me, this ended up being that like it's the perfect fit firearm. It literally is perfect. So as I mount the weapon and get it mounted into my shoulder straight from the factory, it is just comfortable. My hand fits almost to the T exactly where it needs to fall. Literally right on the grip with my finger, I could use maybe three quarters of an inch more, but that's being nitpicky. I mean, this just feels so good to get it mounted. I can see right through the aperture sight, right onto the bladed front sight, no problem. And that just mounts wonderfully. So very easy and intuitive. It's quick, it's smooth. My hand placement on the front, right where it needs to, with one exception, what I can say is this. And this will be in my shooting impressions. This part of the guard, this is metal, this collar here, it gets extremely hot and I found that I tend to ride up on it. That is the only thing. So my, you know, foregrip is a little bit further forward than, than it really allows. So I just need to be careful, bring it back from the front, back a little bit, which then indexes right here on this ramp, on this cover. If you look, this is ramped out. And if I just remember to get in on that, then I'm fine. So generally speaking, very, very comfortable. Length of pull about perfect. Ergonomically, for me, this is awesome. And just a few last notes. So in the box here, just kind of showing you what this came with. So I already mentioned the fact this did come with the two five round magazines. And then inside here, all the usual paperwork, including a nice user's manual, different information and warranty information and whatnot. A couple little tips and tricks. And again, showing you the installation of the magazine. It does come with a lock, some scope rings, a pick rail, which is actually carved out on one side to make room for the ejection port. So as you take a look here, you'll notice the way this ejects, it does require that pick rail to have a cutout on one side to help eject the rounds and a couple of tools to help you along the way. So actually a pretty nice setup, the fact that it comes with some of the basics that you need. In the future, I will be playing around with different optics, uh, different mounting solutions, different aftermarket parts. This is again going to be just the start for me with the Mini 14. And last but not least, just a comparison here against my other rifle. So the Mini 14, Next to the 1022, which is a takedown model. I love this rifle. I have a number of different stocks that I can put the receiver and the barrel into. It makes it very flexible. Greatly, greatly enjoying this rifle. I have a lot of rounds to this, almost a couple thousand at this point, which is awesome. Here on top, my Ruger PC carbine, which recently I have put this vinyl wrap on it. Just looks awesome. Just a real great rifle. I love the fact that now I have the 22 LR, the 9mm, 
and the 5.56 five, or 2.23. So at this point, the Mini 14 rounding out my Ruger rifle setup here. My lineup is growing slowly but surely. In my opinion, it makes a lot of sense for my given needs and the types of things I'm trying to do both in firearms and for this channel. And so with that, that's my final thoughts with the Ruger Mini 14. And so as I mentioned, much, much more to come with the Ruger Mini 14. This was just a real quick first look and impression, kind of an opportunity to you know, catch you guys up to speed so you can see what I've been up to, get a look at this Mini 14. And this to me is just such an awesome sort of progression. Going from the 22, going to the nine millimeter and now 5.56 or 223, just an awesome addition to my firearms lineup. And so, all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you like this content, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless channel, which is more of my primary gear. On that channel, I cover everything from hiking, camping, and backpacking, excursions, all the gear that goes with it. So from sleep systems, shelter systems, knives, axes, backpacks, flashlights, you name it, that's my Outer Limitless YouTube channel. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.